if you are making a pixel art game with Godot, then you might be like me and spend a lot of time in a sprite. So I stumbled onto a Godot add-on that lets me just use my a sprite files. And I didn't have to constantly export the PNGs or tediously set each frame in an animated sprite 2D or animation player. I was intrigued and a little skeptical. Let's check it out. To get this installed, let's head over to the asset lib. Then we'll start typing a sprite and then you'll see the a sprite wizard add-on. There are a few a sprite add-ons here. We're focused on the Aspirite wizard. Go ahead and click on download and then install. And then you'll see Aspirite wizard installed successfully. Click OK. Once it's finished installing, head over to the menu, click on project, project setting, click on plugins, and then click on enable. At the time of this video, it is 7.4.0 and it close. All right, we're just about ready to get started. Just a quick note, I do happen to have an open pull request for an import bug I did find, but you can either download my fix on the GitHub page, or you can apply the fix yourself using my GitHub link as a guide on how to fix it. It's really just adding a few plus ones to some files, or hopefully enough time has passed and this fix was merged and is in this release ready for you, and you can skip this. Key for success with this plugin is that the plugin calls Aspirite's CLI, or Command Line Interface which bridges the gap for translating Aspirite files into usable assets. So one of the first things we need to do is verify Aspirite's CLI can be accessed. To do this, go to the project menu, go down to tools, click on Aspirite wizard and click config. Click the test button and see if it's successful or if there's an error. If you see command not found, this means that it cannot find Aspirite's CLI and we need to set the proper directory and path. On your first install, it will likely fail as it defaults to a sprite in the path, which is the Linux app default. And since I'm using Windows, this isn't where it's installed. And unfortunately, I cannot set the directory path here. We have to do that in a different menu. Let's close out of this. We have to go up here to editor, editor settings, scroll all the way down to a sprite, click on general. And here in this command path, we can set the directory. We need to enter the directory and the actual app name in the command path text box. Here are the defaults for where the app is generally installed by operating system. Note that your location may vary. I have also added these general OS locations to the description of the video where you can easily copy them. Once you have the proper path, let's go back and test. So click close, go back to the project tools, a sprite wizard and config. Notice that the command path has been updated. We click test and we can see that it found it. Now that we have this working, let's go ahead and add some Aspirite files and create some test scenes. But I haven't done anything too crazy. All I've done is just set up some new scenes within folders and have an associated Aspirite file to go with that scene. But as you can see, the scenes are all blank. Let's go ahead and start with the animated sprite scene. Let's start with the animated sprite scene. In this example, I've gone ahead and taken Kenny's tiny dungeon asset and turn the doors into an animation loop inside Aspirite. As you can see here, I have tagged each door via its animation. What is really cool is that this information and any frame duration set in Aspirite gets translated into the animated sprite node. So going back to our example here, let's go ahead and create an animated sprite 2D. Let's scroll down in the inspector down to Aspirite. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the inspector. You'll see the Aspirite section here that was added. Click on the empty Aspirite file. Let's go into this folder that we're using. Click on your Aspirite file. And here there's various options to help pinpoint exactly what you wanna bring into this animated sprite. You can have a specific layer. You could have a, all layers, you can exclude layers if you have like a one you're just playing with, but you don't wanna migrate it. Uh, only so that's visible. And finally, let's actually set the output folder to be within the animated sprite, just to keep things clean and organized. And if you leave it blank, it'll be the name of the file. Let's go ahead and click import. And just like that, we can go look at the animation of the animated sprite 2D and see that it has been migrated. Those tags in Aspirite are now animation frames that are, readily, that are ready to be used within the scene, which is very nice and helps speed up our workflow. Let's move on to the animation player. The animation player tripped me up at first. I expected the animation player to have that same a sprite inspector option, but instead it seems you need a sprite 2D along with the animation player, which is something I hope improves in the future so I don't have extra nodes in my scene. Let's go ahead and start and create a sprite 2D along with the animation player. For the a sprite file, I went ahead and used Kenny's scribble platform assets 
and created three animations in idle, a walk, and attack for our green rectangle fighter. And I'm using that same tag method I did for the animated sprite example. Now let's go back to our editor and let's go to the sprite 2D and let's go ahead and scroll down and let's select our animation player in the scene. Let's select our green fighter. Go ahead and see about our layer options. You can select the layer and see all of our layers there and that way you know you're loaded the right file. Deal with animations and we can just leave it all as defaults. Let's go ahead and set the output folder to our animation player folder and let's import that. Now let's check out our animation player and notice that the animations are now here and they should match what we did in A-Sprite. We've got our attack, our idle, and our walk, which is really, really nice. It's Really nice to not have to double our efforts on replicating experience we do in a sprite again in Godot. Let's go check out the tile map example. The tile map demo uses a sprite's tile map data so we can import tile sets into our own Godot tile map. Note that it doesn't import your tile map if you created one in a sprite. Instead, it's just the tiles that you created from the layer. It is a nice way to ensure that your tiles are set up properly so then you don't have to go back and forth between between Aspirite and Godot when creating your own tile set levels. Again, I am using the Tiny Dungeon set from Kenny in this example, and I've created tile set layer here in Aspirite. Back in Godot, let's go ahead and select our tile map file. And here on the left-hand side, there's a tab called import. This is where you can explicitly tell it how to handle certain Aspirite files, such as just converting the file to a PNG automatically, or by creating the tile sets by selecting the associated option. Note that this is where I came across that bug I mentioned earlier. Go ahead and select the tile set drop down element and click reimport. Go ahead and click OK on this. You should now have a tile map PNG. Now in our tile map scene, let's go ahead and create a tile map and add the imported PNG into that tile set. Come over here. It is a 16 by 16, so new tile set, 16 by 16. Click on tile set and then we're just going to bring this on over. Yes. Now, something you should be aware of is when it exports into this tile map, it takes the tiles and it exports it into a single long row of tiles. Personally wish it was more square instead of just one big row because I feel like I have a hard time finding the tiles in this case. It's just one of the few things that I hope gets improved over time. Now that we have the tile set for this tile map, we can come into here and select tiles here and just start creating our map. Anyway, you get the idea. And that about wraps this up. There are a couple of things to be aware of. All the files get generated into PNGs, mainly like a big sprite sheet, and the tools mainly just used for development. So you don't even need to keep the A sprite files if you don't want to in your project and you can even delete the plugin and things will still work as expected. Anytime an animation is imported, it's imported with the loop equals true. Any animation that is imported that has an underscore with a tag name will actually be set with loop equals false inside our animations. Now, I hope this has helped you. Until next time, stay awesome.